Welcome and good evening to the Women's Travel Club webinar series. Tonight we'll have a look at the Peru tour from September 1st to 10th in uh, 2019 and uh, featuring Mochu Picchu, Lake Titicaca and the Amazon. Uh, just an absolute fabulous, fantastic country to visit. Hi everyone, I'm Kevin Hilberdink. I work for the Women's Travel Club in marketing and creative, and it is now my distinct pleasure to say hello and welcome Marianne Southall, the owner of the Women's Travel Club. Hello, thank you so much for taking time to attend our webinar. I hope you enjoy it. I hope it kind of gives you a good overview of this upcoming tour. I'm going to start with just a little bit of uh, an overview of the Women's Travel Club in general and just a few things about all of our tours that will apply to this tour but do apply to pretty much every tour we have and just give you an idea of how we work. Um, so the Women's Travel Club came about about six years ago now. Um, it was actually started by myself, but closely behind me came Debbie Gru, who has been my right hand in everything. Uh, we were both travel agents and had a lot of clients, uh, especially women, that wanted to travel and they had bucket list items, they had places they wanted to go and places they wanted to see. And the reason that they weren't doing these tours was mostly because they didn't have somebody to travel with. They either weren't married um, or they their significant other just didn't travel or couldn't travel. Mm -hmm. And so they we're just opting not to do these tours rather than go on say a, a large bus tour with uh 40 people most of them being coupled off um and just feeling a little bit out of place and so we start to formulate the idea of what we wanted our tours to be like and how we wanted this this to go and as it we start to develop the women's travel club um I was the part owner in a actual travel agency at the time. I sold my interest in the travel agency and started to concentrate on the Women's Travel Club 100%. So now um, it's grown since then and we're, we're very pleased and we're, we think we are really meeting our goal of giving these ladies these tours that they were looking for. Um, so one of the key components of our tours is our all small group tours. So our tours are at the most capped at 16 ladies per tour. Some of them even less depending on logistics and we find this is wonderful. Um, it gives very good for camaraderie and, and friendship. You feel like you're just traveling with a small group of friends. Um, and also it allows us to do activities and excursions that you can't do when you're on um, a big tour with 40 people and you're not waiting in line all the time for things. You're, you're just able to really appreciate and, and be part of everything that we do. So it seems like that really allows the ladies to do things like workshops and local classes and, and, uh, and really get a sense for the flavor um, especially with some of the cooking classes, local exactly. cuisine. Yeah, more yeah. hands-on type of things, tastings. Um, just you, you feel a little bit more VIP on the tour than when you're just standing in line and just watching. Um, so some of the activities that we do, like we've mentioned a few, would be the tastings, cooking classes. Uh, the top picture is... A geisha makeover in Japan so they actually dressed us head to toe as a geisha with makeup wigs everything and then took us out on the streets and did a whole photo shoot where everybody got to keep the photos so mm -hmm. it was an amazing experience something I will definitely rate it as one of my top experiences and I'll never forget it um, for accommodation we offer a choice of single or double occupancy obviously the double occupancy is going to be less when you have a single occupancy you're paying for a hundred percent for that room every night and double occupancy you're sharing the accommodation mm -hmm. costs with somebody along the way uh, we do always have a lot of ladies on our tours that would like a single occupancy so if you like single occupancy book it early because they tend to sell out on the tours faster than double occupancy um, also, if you want to take advantage of the lower double occupancy rates, but you don't have a roommate, we will match you with a roommate. Okay. So we take a little bit of information. So for instance, I'm a light sleeper. 
yeah so we're not going to match you with somebody that <laughs> you know snores kind of thing so ideally, yes yeah. I, I, ideally we we pick try and match um so that it works out well along the tour uh, these are some of the tour leaders that we have. Um, there's Debbie up in the top. There's myself, Melissa, Kirsten, Irene, Linda, Sarah. So um, on any given tour, she can check in under the tour details and pricing under there. It lists who the tour leader is. And you can see some, if you've traveled with us before, you probably know some of the tour leaders. Um, if not, um, you will get to know them as you travel with us. Um, I just want to mention that Kirsten, um, a lot, many of our ladies know this um, right now because she was on a tour and had to quickly come back from mm -hmm. a tour. Her husband is in very rough shape um, in the hospital. And so we're really keeping him in our thoughts and prayers and, yeah. and really hoping he can pull through this. Um, okay. Let's go on to the highlight of the evening and what we're here to talk about, which is our Peru tour. Um, as Kevin mentioned, uh, the highlights of the tour will definitely be Machu Picchu, Lake Titicaca, and um, the Amazon extension at the end. Uh, the tour itself goes September 1st to the 10th. If you do the Amazon extension, that adds a few days to the end of it, so it ends up going until the 15th. Hmm. Beautiful view of the Machu Picchu ruins there. Yeah, truly a world-class, seventh wonder of the world type destination. Oh, absolutely. All right, of course, Peru is famous for the glorious and iconic Inca Citadel of Machu Picchu. Yet this fetid site is just a flash in a 5,000 year history of Peruvian settlement. We will not only explore Machu Picchu, but so much more on this amazing destination that this amazing destination has to offer. From Lima's great museums that reveal in full detail the sophistication, skill, and passion of those lost civilizations to the remote communities that show us how, old, how the old ways live on. We will journey to Lake Titicaca on one of our famous train rides, visit a community that lives on an island of reeds, and finally end, up, end your tour in, deep in the heart of the Amazon. All right, so we're going to start the tour in Lima. So you'll fly into Lima. And from there, we head to Cusco, uh, where you'll have a couple days to acclimatize to uh, the altitude. From Cusco, we head to the Sacred Valley. From there, we head to Aguas Calientes, which is at the base of Machu Picchu. And we go back to Cusco. And finally, we do our train ride to Puno, where we um, enjoy Lake Titicaca and what it has to offer. And then if you are continuing on to the Amazon, we're going to fly to Puerto Maldonado and have a short boat journey to get to our Amazon Eco Resort. So the cool thing with this tour, just looking at the map, is uh, if they do the Amazon extension, um, you get a real variety of um, of fauna, of landscape types, of climates. You're, you're really going to see four or five, maybe more ecosystems. Exactly. A lot of people will go to Peru to see Machu Picchu, and they'll just go and experience Machu Picchu. Which is great. Which is obviously, yeah, yeah. it's one of the world's <laughs> most amazing sites. Right. But there's so much more that Peru has. Yeah. So this, this tour takes in a lot of other areas and gives you a little bit of everything that it has to offer. Okay, so we're gonna start in Lima. Welcome to Peru. Upon arrival in Lima, you'll be met at the airport and transferred to the hotel where you've been pre-registered for early check-in because um, you're most likely going to come in on a very early flight. Lima is Peru's capital with over 8 million residents. It perches on a cliff overlooking the Pacific Ocean and has an uninterrupted history of more than 2,000 years. A capital founded by Spanish conquistadors that subsequently exploded with influxes from Asia and then from Peru's own Andean highlands. Lima is perhaps the most fascinating city in the continent. Our first day in Peru will be a full day tour of Lima. After breakfast, the tour begins at a Peruvian market where we will be able to appreciate a variety of Peruvian products, enjoy and taste exotic fruits, and be amazed by a huge variety of fish and seafood.
Then we'll visit the Larco Museum that houses an unequal private collection called the Treasures of Ancient Peru. It inspires its visitors to discover, learn about, and enjoy the more than 5,000 years of the history of ancient Peru through its more than 45,000 artifacts. Then a visit to the National Museum of Anthropology and Archaeology. This small but well-organized museum in the district of Pueblo Libra has one of the best exhibitions of the art and archaeology of ancient Peru in chronological order to facilitate understanding. Then onto the main square, where you find the government's palace, the archbishop's palace, the city hall, and the cathedral. Here, you will have the chance of photographing the impressive colonial buildings of this part of the city. Afterwards, we'll explore the San Francisco convent. Um, if anyone's wondering, Lima weather in September is usually a high of 20, low of 15, and almost no chance of rain. So oh, very, com very comfortable yeah. weather. Lovely, comfortable. So this evening, we're going to visit the impressive magic water circuit, the world's largest complex of fountains and holder of the Guinness World Record. The waters of the main attraction, known as the Magic Fountain, reach a height of 80 meters. Try the sun Tunnel of Surprises, a 35-meter walk through a tunnel of water. The Irresistible Children's Fountain or the Maze of Dreams Fountain made from walls of pro water producing different effects. So now we're done in Lima and after breakfast, we're gonna transfer to the airport and board our flight to Cusco. Once we arrive in Cusco, we're gonna be met by a local guide who will transfer us to the Sacred Valley. Along the way, we'll visit Chinchero, the Pizac Market, and the Pizac Ruins with a stop for lunch at a local restaurant. Chinchero is a quaint little town built at the end of the 1400s. The townsfolk are famous for having preserved traditional Andean spinning and weaving techniques. And they set up a market in the town square to sell handicrafts. Yes, that has Women's Travel Club written all over it. <laughs> Pack an extra bag. <laughs> then you will visit the town of Pisac, 31 kilometers from Cusco in the sacred valley of the Incas. The old city an Incan archaeological site is located at the top of the mountain and there you will witness firsthand the stonemasonry skills of our ancestors. Afterwards you will descend to the town and walk through its colorful market. On the fourth day in Peru we'll head out for a full day tour of Maras Salt Flats, the Terraces of Moray and the Mismene community. Our first stop is the town of Maras which is where one of the world's finest salts is extracted, Raz salt. These mines from terraces and lagoons, which are a mandatory spot for snapping, these, these mines form terraces and lagoons, which are a mandatory spot for snapping amazing pictures. Now on to visit Mismane community, where you will experience the Andean lifestyle. You will explore local gastronomy through a wonderful cooking class beginning your experience with the planting and harvesting of some products according to the season. Then next to your hosts, you will prepare a delicious traditional dish using only local products, which you will then enjoy for lunch. Our last stop will be to visit Moray our, our Agricultural Terraces, which were used as a botanic lab laboratory by the Incas and from where you will have a privileged view of the Sacred Valley. Now on for the highlight of the tour. After breakfast, pack a small overnight bag. We are only allowed a small bag on the train to Aguas Calientes and our remaining luggage will be sent ahead to the hotel in Cusco. Now to visit one of the most important tourist destinations in the world, Machu Picchu. The excursion starts with a train trip to the town of Aguas Calientes. The natural beauty of the surroundings makes the train the best way to start your visit. When you arrive, you will start the ascent to the ruins, which will no doubt, without doubt be one of the, your most unforgettable experiences. At Machu Picchu, you can see one of the seven modern wonders of the world and take some impressive photos. Lunch is included, then it's back down to Aguas Calientes for a rest. We will have the morning at leisure in Aguas Calientes. 
Also known as Machu Picchu Pueblo, this town lies in a deep gorge below its ruins, a virtual island. It's cut off from all roads and enclosed by stone cliffs, towering cloud forests, and two rushing rivers. However, just to warn you, despite its gorgeous location, Aguas Calientes has the feel of a gold rush town. With a large nomad population, slack services that count on one-time one customers and an architectural tradition of rebar and unfinished cement. Sounds kind of like Niagara Falls. Yeah, <laughs> it's quite, a thing. <laughs> have a few issues, but it also sounds kind of an interesting place. Sounds beautiful. For the day. For the day, yeah. Yeah, it sounds beautiful. Yeah. But yeah. I don't think we're getting any five-star dinners there. Um, the, uh, this afternoon, we'll board our Vista to Home train back for a ride to Cusco. Just a quick word to uh, to our friends listening. Uh, U.S. dollars are accepted widely in Peru. Just make sure they are in perfect condition. If the bills are torn or ripped or whether they will not accept them. Uh, if that's the case, you'll have to use uh, Peruvian uh, currency. It's about uh, three Peruvian dollars to one U.S. dollar, but they will use U.S. dollars as long as they're in good shape. Well, oh, thank you. Once back in Cusco, we'll check into our hotel, the Sinesta Cusco, for the next two nights. The undisputed archaeological capital of the Americas, Cusco is the continent's oldest continuously inhabited city and the gateway to Machu Picchu. Cosmopolitan Cusco thrives with a measure of contradiction. Ornate cathedrals squat over Inca temples. Massage hawkers ply their, the narrow cobblestone passages. A rural Andean woman bottle feeds water to her pet llama, while the finest boutiques sell pricey alpaca knits. After breakfast, we will join our guide for a full day tour. Get to know the city of Cusco, a UNESCO heritage called World Heritage Site and possessor of a style of its own. The tour begins in Corichacachan Temple, an old Ancan palace and main center for the worship of the sun god Inti. Once the Spanish conquered Peru, the Dominican order built a church over its temple's foundations, the Temple of Santo, Santo Domingo. Your next destination is the main square, then the adventure continues as the Sashi human fortress built of enormous stone blocks expertly shaped by the Incas. The tour continues with visits to archaeological sites, which are important religious and administrative centers for the Incas. We continue to the visit to the San Blas neighborhood, famous for its artisans. Your excursion continues to Taipan, an Inca archaeological complex in which water flows through large stone canals. Here you will appreciate the amazing hydraulic engineering knowledge of the Incas, as well as one, a wonderful system of terraces in which the land delivers privileged fruits until today. Really looks like an amazing city. Uh, from what I hear, incredibly vibrant. There's always something going on, lots of festivals. Uh, beautiful architecture. Uh, do check your tour notes um, for just some information about altitude. It is at considerable altitude, so when you when you first get there, you might want to pace yourself a little bit and um, take advantage of 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 being properly hydrated and 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 hopefully get your get your rest. But there is a little trick to dealing with altitude. Most of us live at fairly close to sea level. So it will be quite a change for, for most of your uh, um, tour members. Okay, while well, Machu Picchu may be the number one highlight of this tour, today's rail journey will be a close second. This spectacular train trip starts in the historical city of Cusco and goes south to Puno by the side of Lake Titicaca. The wind, glass windows on the Titicaca train will let you perfectly observe the beautiful landscape. The train slowly ascends to very high and cold places around the magnificent Andes mountain range over deep, the deep river valleys. Then the train goes through the Andean plains where you see vicunas and alpacas grazing among the small villages along the road. Sorry, Mary, I got to interrupt you. Sorry. The Alpacas I got. The first one, <laughs> I didn't quite catch. Vicunas. What's that? They are a relative of the camel. Okay. Um, but they look like a small deer. So 
not really like a distant family. relative <laughs> a distant relative oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, i'm not sure what makes them a relative or who decides they're a relative of yeah, a camel because they don't look like camels but chromosome down the yeah line, but yeah but that's what they are they look like a small deer okay. anyway did not know that thank you um the trip includes a stop at la rea the highest Spot on the route to observe the spectacular landscape at 4,300 meters above sea level. The trip includes a wonderful three-course lunch on board. You will love this train ride. The train looks amazing. It is, yeah. It's a, it is a real highlight. Everybody loved it last time we did this. Um, and on to Puno with a regal plaza concrete block buildings and crumbling bricks that blend into the hills puno has its share of both grit and cheer but it may just capture your heart with its own rackety charm it serves as the jumping off point for lake titicaca after breakfast we join our guard guide for a full day excursion to amantani and euros islands after a visit to Amitani Island, famous for its ancient terraced fields, still worked by the islanders. This island used to be considered sacred by pre-Inca cultures. Even today, you can feel its energy and mysticism. On arrival, you'll be welcomed by local people and will share their daily activities, such as weaving, farming, and mystical ceremonies, among others. Then you will visit the Handicraft Center and Main Square before having a box lunch. In the afternoon, you will visit the floating islands of Euros, which are made from Totora reed, whose inhabitants preserve their ancestral traditions. So the floating islands are actually made from reeds um, where you're walking. And it's really, really interesting. Cool. On our last day, we'll be taken to the ruins at Sol Solistani, a famous cemetery on the Adian Andean Plateau near Puno, next to the beautiful Lake Umeo. The site contains huge funerary towers called chulpas, which date from 600 to 800 AD, some of which reach 12 meters high and are 7.5 meters in diameter. On the way, you will also see the waru waru, or interconnected canals used in our ah, agriculture. You will surely be impressed by the scenery in this zone. Next, a half-day visit to the city of Lampa and Puno, also known as the Pink City, from the color of the local clay. The tour includes a visit to the beautiful colonial era, era Church of Santiago, built entirely of stone by the Jesuits between 1675 and 1685. You will also see the catacombs in which those who died during the construction of the church were interred. Lampa has a number of townhouses dating from the colonial and republican eras. The excursion ends with our return to Juliaca Airport directly. This evening, you will either begin your journey home or continue on to the Amazon. For those who wish to continue to the Amazon, we'll depart Puno and travel to Cusco for the night. Then we'll continue our journey with a short flight to Puerto Maldonado. Our Amazon experience will take place on Tambopata National Reserve, which offers a rare opportunity to discover a the biodiversity of birds, mammals, reptiles, insects, and trees. Record-setting numbers of animal species are concentrated within small areas, and the variety of plant life is greater than almost anywhere in the world. We'll spend four nights at the Inca Terra Reserva Amazonica, a beautiful eco-lodge. We will have a 45 minute boat ride from Porto Maldonado to arrive at our eco resort in Tambopata National Reserve. All our meals and excursions are included at the resort. We will have a guide assigned to us for this day. We do have a suggested itinerary for each day, but the lodge is very flexible and we will be able to change our excursions around if we wish. Here's a short video that's gonna give you an idea of what we will experience at the Amazon Lodge. So it's the morning of our first full day here at Reserva Amazon and shape it up to be a pretty busy day. <laughs> 
you know, then here at Reserve at Amazon, it begins the way most states begin here, with a scenic boat ride down the Monterey de Dios River, which is the mind flow of this part of Southern Peru, and a segue to all kinds of incredible adventure. First up for us, a visit to an actual working family farm to learn about life here in the rainforest and to get a taste of some incredibly fresh and incredibly tasty fruit picked right from the tree. We even get a chance to cut our own fresh bananas. Oh, wow. Uh, is it heavy? Yes, it's coming. No, it's okay. <laughs> and then a short hike through the wild and beautiful rainforest itself to get close to nature and experience the majesty that is the Amazon. So we've left the farm and uh, we hiked through the jungle about half an hour or so. We're now here on Gamutana Creek and uh, we're just cruising. It's a relaxing ride. It's a beautiful day. We're watching for birds, canines, any kind of wildlife, very peacefully making our way back toward the lodge. So uh, not a bad way to spend the morning. And then it's back to our home in the jungle, Reserva Amazonica, for a quick lunch of authentic and amazing Peruvian cuisine, followed by a stroll through the beautiful property and a stop at our cabin to rest, to freshen up, and to get ready for our next adventure. There are lots of incredible activities to choose from at Reserva Amazonica, but there's one in particular that everyone says you just have to do when you're here. We are now on what is got to be one of the coolest excursions here at Reserve by Amazon, and that is their canopy tour, their hanging bridges. So step by step, we make our way up high into the treetops, where the bird watching is spectacular, and the walk along the bridges. Yeah, all right. Now we're rolling. Let's just say it'll definitely get your heart pumping. And when the adventure is over and you're ready to wind down, it's back out on the river for a ride you'll never forget. Trust me. So we're going out for a sunset cruise, taking a little canoe and going around the island. So it should be really nice. It's great weather out, and it should be a beautiful sunset. Nice way to end of the day. Yeah, let's go. Let's rock. Reserva Amazonica lies directly adjacent to Peru's incredible Tango Pata National Reserve, which means the crowds are few, the scenery is spectacular, the wildlife is abundant, and as we discovered, the sunsets are a sight to behold. Altogether, it's the perfect combination and a perfect adventure. So that gives you a bit of an idea. Um, the weather in the Amazon is going to be different from what we've experienced in other places in Peru. It's going to be hotter, isn't it, Kev? Yeah, you're going to be looking at temperatures into the 30s, probably 32 daytime high or about 80, for, 88 Fahrenheit yeah. for our American guests. Uh, complete difference than when you're at uh, altitude. Basically, in, in Peru, temperature is dictated by your uh, how high up you are. So when you're the day at Machu Picchu uh, in the afternoon should, with some luck, be actually fairly, fairly warm. But mornings at altitude can be quite cool, maybe even just a, a few degrees above freezing. But it should warm up as the day goes on. Once you're in the Amazon, though, you're in the heat and humidity. It's, yeah, it's warm. It be. So keep in mind for packing. <laughs> Okay, so let's just go through the highlights and inclusions for the Peru part of the tour. So we're going to have nine nights in superior first-class accommodations. Um, if you're on the website, you can click on the accommodations tab and it lists all the different accommodations that we stay in. And there are some very nice accommodations on there. Transportation by private luxury air-conditioned coach. Nine breakfasts, five lunch, one dinner. Uh, the visit to the Larco Museum and the Museum of Anthropology and Archaeology. We're going to visit Lima's Magic Water Circuit. I always want to say circus. Circuit. <laughs> uh, visit to Chinchero and Pisac. Visit the Maraz Salt Pools, Indian Cooking Class. Visit Moray Agricultural Terraces. 
Inca rail train to Aguas Calientes entrance and tour of Machu Picchu, the Cusco city tour, Titicaca Vista Dome train to Puno, the Tipan excursion, uh, excursion to Amantani Island, excursion to the floating islands of Euros, Solisteni Graves excursion, English speaking guide, airport transfers and services of a women's travel club guide. Thank goodness for the English speaking guide because you can tell I my Spanish is <laughs> <laughs> non-existent. Some tough, some tough pronunciations though, for sure. And then uh, for those wanting the Amazon extension, and that is going to include four nights in their rainforest lodge accommodations, the one night in Cusco, uh, round trip transportation by land and river, buffet breakfast, uh, a la carte lunch and dinner, the tea time every day, bottled water in our rooms, uh, and the, all the excursions are included, the entrance fee to Lake Sandoval, uh, cocktail hour every day. My favorite. Yes. Um, English speaking guide, services of a women's travel club guide. Uh, what it does not include is your flight. So once we leave Puno, um, we have to fly to Cusco and then we fly to uh, Puerto Mandaldo. Um, the flight all together is less than 300. It's Canadian. like one, less than 200, actually. Yeah. yeah, it's about just under 200 Canadian. So what's that, 140? It's like $10 US. Yeah, it's free. <laughs> <laughs> we have to pay the US people to go. <laughs> okay, speaking of prices, here's our prices. Uh, September 1st to the 10th for the Peru and Machu Picchu tour. Uh, double occupancy in Canadian, it's $42.98 right now um, with exchange that works out to about $32.50 US. Single occupancy, so that's a room to yourself throughout the tour, is $52.19 Canadian or approximately $4,000 US. Uh, the deposit is only $300 with the final payment being due on May 1st. The Amazon extension, uh, the, which is the four nights, five days, is single occupancy is 1929 Canadian, approximately 1462 US. And uh, single occupancy with your own room is 2399, approximately 1800 US. Uh, the deposit for that is $2 and final, or $2, $200. And the final payment is due the same day, May 1st. Um, so now I am going to just open up um, my little thing here. If anybody has any questions, just you can hit on your little raise your hand or question icon and uh, we can either read them or open up your mic and you can uh, talk to us. So if you have any questions, just let us know. I see no questions yet. Oh, I see Debbie Granger has a question. Open. Oh, it says you're self-muted, Debbie. Um, I don't know if you can unmute your mic. How's that? Yeah, that's perfect. We Hi. can hear you well. Hi, Hi, Debbie. Hi, Debbie. Hi, guys. Great presentation. So just a quick Thank question. You. I noticed only one dinner. Can you give me an idea of the co average cost of of dinners um it's quite reasonable often when we don't have dinners included it's because um there's a lot of good choices that are a la carte and that that would um it's going to work out financially better for you to kind of buy your meals and have a lot of choice than to have a lot of included meals um, in the way that it's set up. So Kev's just going to look up an idea of just like an average kind of cost, but it is quite reasonable. Okay. I'm just thinking, is it $30 or $50 per night or? Uh, he's going to. Just planning number. Yeah. Hold on. Let me get and it'll be in your tour notes too, an idea of um, food pricing so that you have that. Um, but just so you know. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, uh, whenever you want to do a search quick, it doesn't um, doesn't come up. You don't have to get the answer now. Maybe just send it out to the participants. Yeah, that's no, it would be in the tour notes for sure. Um, it does not look pricey at all. It looks like dinner per person at a kind of mid-range type restaurant is is twenty twenty to thirty dollars all in. Um, with, yeah, I think the like food portion you're probably looking just under twenty dollars, yeah. and then if you add in you know a few couple glasses of wine or something, then you're going to be up around thirty dollars for dinner. Perfect. Thank you very much. Okay. Oh, just as a note, um, one more I, I mentioned: uh, U.S. dollars are widely accepted um, in Cusco as well. Uh, credit cards are widely accepted. Um, however, make sure it's a Visa. Visa is widely accepted. MasterCard a little bit less so, and American Express apparently is not commonly accepted in Peru. Are you listening? Because all of a sudden it went silent. Okay, so after I ask my question. I am. Um, 